This is a review video for Biology 12, the all or none response of a neuron. The action potential for a neuron is often characterized as all or none when it receives a, a signal from another neuron. The reason it is called all or none because the signal it receives, it will either generate a plus 40 millivolt signal and continue that action potential down, down the neuron, um, or it won't present anything. A faint signal, a weak signal, will generate no response Whereas if you just meet the threshold required to generate a signal, it'll generate a plus 40 millivolt signal, so will a medium, so will a strong, so will an intense signal. And so there are only two results from many different signal types. This is essentially a digital system. It is either on or it's off. A question may then arise, how does one differentiate between signal intensity? If you're a neuron responding to, say, very bright light versus very uh, dim light if you're a sensory neuron, um, how do you generate different types of in intensity? Rather than increasing or decreasing the strength of the signal, you increase or decrease the rate of the signal or the number of signals per second. So signal intensity is determined by signal rate or the number of signals per second. So whereas uh, a medium signal might be signal, 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 um, a higher intensity would just signal more often, signal, 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 signal. Uh, to show how this works, on the next slide, uh, we've set up here, a it looks like a motor neuron, and we've got uh, three other neurons attached to it. Um, over here, where the uh, axons of one neuron are interacting with the dendrites of our motor neuron here, our motor neuron has a threshold signal of plus 40 millivolts. A synapse, uh, where it is, is the junction between uh, one neuron to another to generate a signal, each one of these synapses are, say, plus 21 millivolts. Let us then consider a signal coming from this neuron, traveling down, entering the synapse here, and then deciding whether or not it's going to continue on. The signal it generates is plus 21 millivolts. That does not meet the threshold of plus 40 millivolts for this signal, and so this signal does not continue. Um, the signal stops there, the signal dies out, and uh, the motor neuron does not fire. Now let's consider another case where we have a signal traveling down two neurons towards the same motor neuron. So at the same time, these two signals travel to synapses and both fire. At each one of these, we are generating an action potential of plus 21 millivolts. That meets our threshold of plus 40 millivolts, and as it just barely exceeds that threshold. And so, these signals then cause um, a potential to be generated on our motor neuron. A signal then travels down our motor neuron, and we have our muscle twitch. Uh, now consider if we generate a signal from all three of these neurons. If we generate a signal from all three of the neurons, all three travel down, we now have a plus uh, 21 millivolts from each one, so say plus 63 millivolts overall, that exceeds our plus 40 millivolt signal. This does indeed uh, generate a an action potential down this neuron, but the same action potential as before travels down and causes a motor twitch. So even though we have now quite a strong signal, we get the same kind of response. Now there's one other possibility. Uh, neurons can also act as inhibitory functions. So I've changed this particular neuron here. I'm just going to highlight that. It is now generates a minus 21 millivolt response. Neurons can also have inhibitory actions, so it makes it more difficult to generate an action potential. Now consider if these three neurons uh, pass their signal on. We have plus 21 millivolts, another plus 21, so we're at plus 42. However, we also receive an inhibitory signal. Overall, uh, one cancels out the other, and we're only at plus 21 millivolts, so a signal will not fire. No response is generated. Uh, eh, no signal, it won't continue on, and we won't generate a muscle twitch. We would need another signal from another neuron in order to overcome that inhibitory effect. So there can be both uh, 
an action potential generated by each neuron. There also can be inhibitory effects to make it more difficult to fire. Um, and whether or not it does fire, it doesn't matter how much you have. As long as you reach the threshold, you'll generate the same signal. And that is the review video for the all or none response of a neuron.